Greetings, and welcome back to the channel, as we continue to delve into the world of science fiction cinema. Today, we'll look at the films from the years 1920 and 1921. This period in film history is marked by the emergence of science fiction as a genre that would go on to captivate audiences for generations to come. We'll also briefly look at the history, culture, and scientific advancements that shaped the world in which these stories were created. The early decade was defined by a unique series of events. In the wake of the First World War, revolutions, and the formations of new ideologies, the world was undergoing a transformation both culturally and technologically. The Roaring Twenties brought forth a newfound sense of freedom and experimentation in art and entertainment giving rise to the Jazz Age and a fascination with the possibilities of the future. It was also the time of prohibition, rebuilding societies torn down by war and economic uncertainties. At the same time, scientific advancements were reshaping society with innovations in radio broadcasting and early experiments with sound and film offered glimpses of what would completely reshape the entertainment industry. I will dedicate a future Spotlight episode to the evolution of the science fiction genre in film, but I wanted to briefly touch on the subject here as we begin to explore the films of the 1920s. Though The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari is considered a horror film and not science fiction, the two genres would influence each other through the upcoming decades. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari is a landmark silent German expressionist film from 1920. It exerted a profound and lasting influence on the science fiction genre in cinema. Its impact can be seen in several key aspects. First, the film's avant-garde visual style, characterized by distorted and unsettling sets, star contrast, and angular shapes, set a precedent for the visual aesthetics of many later science fiction films. The use of expressionist elements to create a nightmarish and disorienting atmosphere laid the groundwork for the genre's distinctive and surreal visuals. Additionally, Caligari introduced innovative narrative techniques including unreliable narration and a twist ending. These storytelling devices became hallmarks of the science fiction cinema where they are frequently used to explore the fluidity of reality and unreliability of perception, and the psychological deaths of characters. Films like Metropolis, Blade Runner, and Inception owe a debt to the pioneering narrative techniques of this groundbreaking film. And now let's take a look at some of the groundbreaking science fiction films of 1920. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde this adaptation of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde from 1920 is directed by John S. Robertson and written by Clara Barringer. It stars John Barrymore in the titular roles and is a retelling of Robert Louis Stevenson's iconic story. In this rendition, Barrymore delivers a memorable performance, effectively portraying the duality of Dr. Jekyll, a well-respected scientist, and his malevolent alter ego, Mr. Hyde. The film masterfully captures the transformation of Jekyll into Hyde through innovative makeup and special effects for its time, emphasizing the psychological and physical toll of Jekyll's experiments. With its gothic atmosphere and Barrymore's compelling portrayal, this adaptation remains a significant cinematic representation of the timeless struggle between good and evil and the consequences of scientific curiosity. The film explores themes of identity, morality, and the consequences of tampering with the boundaries of human nature. It delves into the psychological torment of Dr. Jekyll as he grapples with his darker self, offering a cautionary tale about the dangers of unchecked ambition and the uncontrollable forces that lie within us all. The film's influence can be seen in the numerous adaptations and interpretations of Stevenson's story that followed, solidifying its place in the pantheon of classic horror cinema 
and its enduring relevance in the discussion of human nature and the human psyche. I do prefer this adaptation over the version I discussed in Episode 2. John Barrymore gives a remarkable performance as both Jekyll and Hyde and shows how visual storytelling and effects have evolved in just a few short years. Algol, Tragedy of Power, a German silent film directed by Hans Berkmeister and written by Hans Brennert and Friedel Kohn, is a significant science fiction film that explores themes of power, capitalism, and the consequences of technological advancement. This film tells the story of a working-class engineer, Robert Hearn, played by Emil Jennings, who discovers a powerful energy source, a star called Algol, that can transform the world's industries and give him power to rule the world. However, the allure of wealth and power corrupts Hearn, leading to a tragic series of events as he becomes entangled in a web of greed and exploitation. Algol is notable for its social commentary, portraying the dangers of unbridled capitalism and the ethical dilemmas that arise when science and industry intersect. The film's visual effects and set design were innovative for its time, with sets designed by the cabinet of Dr. Caligari designer Walter Ryman, Algol Tragedy of Power is a thought-provoking exploration of the moral complexities surrounding scientific discovery and the human capacity for both progress and destruction. It remains an early example of science fiction cinema that grapples with the timeless themes of ambition, morality, and consequences of unchecked power, reflecting on the societal concerns of the post-World War I era. For many years, this film was considered lost, but a copy was recovered and screened in 2010. This was my favorite of the films covered in this episode. It was a more intense character study rather than traditional science fiction with a fine performance by Emile Jennings. The Invisible Ray, directed by Harry A. Pollard and written by Guy McConnell, was an American serial consisting of 15 episodes. Unfortunately, this is one of the many productions that is now considered lost. Praised for its visual effects for the time, according to the moving picture world, mighty buildings, rocks and forests are set afire and exploded. The expert adaptation of clever photographic devices makes the picture appear strikingly realistic. What is known about the plot of the serial is a scientist discovers a death ray but locks it away only to give a key to his daughter, and she in turn is hunted by criminals. The power contained in the box is enough to destroy the world. I think this would have been a lot of fun to watch, and I do hope a copy is eventually recovered and released. And now let's briefly take a look at the films of 1921. Die Insel der Verschollenen, also known as The Island of the Lost, is a German science fiction film released in 1921 directed by Urban Gad. This is a very loose adaptation of The Island of Dr. Moreau by H.G. Wells. It is also an unauthorized adaptation and Wells was initially not aware that this adaptation even existed. The film tells the story of a group of people who become stranded on a remote island after their ship runs aground during a storm. The island, shrouded in mystery, is inhabited by a reclusive scientist who has been conducting experiments on the island's native population. As the survivors explore the island, they uncover the scientist's dark secrets and must confront the ethical and moral dilemmas posed by his actions. The film is notable for its exploration of themes related to science, ethics, and colonialism. It delves into the consequences of unchecked scientific experimentation and the exploitation of indigenous populations. This was another film that was considered lost for many years and was recently recovered and screened in 2014. This was my least favorite of the films covered in this episode. From its ridiculous plot to overt racism, it is a film that would not be well received today. Eleomo Meccanico, or The Mechanical Man, is an Italian silent science fiction film released in 1921 and directed by and starring Andre Deed. This pioneering film is renowned for its early exploration of the concept of a humanoid robot 
and its influence on the science fiction genre. The story revolves around an inventor who creates an advanced mechanical man, a robot with human-like qualities. The inventor enters the robot into a boxing competition against a human champion, leading to a thrilling showdown between man and machine. The Mechanical Man is notable for its innovative special effects and the use of early robotics in cinema, making it a precursor to later robot-themed science fiction films. The film's depiction of a robot capable of performing complex tasks and even engaging in combat sparked fascination and curiosity about the potential of technology and automation. While the film's narrative may seem simplistic by today's standards, its pioneering use of robotics and early exploration of the man and machine relationship have secured its place in the history of science fiction cinema. The term robot wasn't even coined until the previous year in Karel Kapik's RUR, Rossum's Universal Robots. For many years, the film was considered lost, but portions have been recovered. I would have loved to have seen the entire film. The robot fights, though charming by today's standards, give us an idea of how filmmakers would use robots in future films. A Message from Mars is both a 1921 remake of the 1913 film, as well as an adaptation of the play by the same name from 1899. The film was written by Arthur J. Zellner and Arthur Maud. Directed by Maxwell Carger, the story is a whimsical tale with elements of science fiction and fantasy. The story revolves around the character Horace Parker, a selfish and materialistic man who is visited by a messenger from Mars. This extraterrestrial visitor takes Parker on a journey to the Red Planet, where he encounters a society that values kindness and compassion over material wealth. Through a series of adventures and experiences on Mars, Parker undergoes a transformation and learns the importance of selfishness and love, ultimately returning to Earth a changed man. Unfortunately, I was not able to find a copy of this film to review for this episode. I did like the original 1913 version and hope to find an adaptation to review at a later date. Der Haus zum Mond, or The House on the Moon, is a lost German silent film from 1921, directed by Karl Heinz Martin and written by Martin along with Rudolf Leinhardt. Unfortunately, I was able to find very little information about this film. While we may not have the opportunity to view The House on the Moon today, its status as a lost film underscores the importance of film preservation efforts to safeguard and restore our cultural heritage. Lost films like this one serve as a reminder to the importance of early cinema and the need to protect and preserve the remaining treasures of this era. The early 1920s were a period of immense cultural and societal change. With the scars of the First World War still fresh in the collective memory, it was against this backdrop that science fiction literature continued to thrive and evolve, offering readers an escape into the imaginative worlds and visionary ideas that would influence filmmakers. Stories created at this time would become influential on future filmmakers and even adapted into films. R.U.R. Rossum's Universal Robots by Karel Kapik. Published in 1920, it is a groundbreaking science fiction play that introduced the term robot to the world. In the play, Kapik explores the consequences of mass-producing artificial beings designed to serve humanity. It raises profound ethical questions about the consequences of unchecked technological advancement and the dehumanization that can result from it. Themes that continue to resonate in modern science fiction literature and discussions about artificial intelligence. The play was adapted several times, including a BBC broadcast in 1938 and again in 1948, a rock musical in 2014, and as a brief side note, author Isaac Asimov was a vocal critic of the play. The Comet, a short story by W.E.B. Du Bois. Published in 1920, Du Bois' short story tells the story of a black man and a white woman who are the sole survivors of a catastrophic comet collision with Earth, highlighting themes of racial inequality and the potential for common humanity in the face of disaster. We, 
written by Yegevni Zemaden, was written from 1920 to 1921, though it was not published in the United States until 1924. We is a dystopian novel that would become one of the cornerstones of the sci-fi genre. Set in a highly controlled and dehumanized future society, We explores themes of surveillance and conformity and the suppression of individuality. The work would later be adapted for German television in 1982, and a Russian film adaptation has been completed but not released. This work influenced everyone from George Orwell and Aldous Huxley to George Lucas. In the early part of the 1920s, the world was recovering from the ravages of war and revolution and found itself at the crossroads of change, conflict, and transformation. Here are some of the significant developments that shaped the course of history. Prohibition in the United States The 18th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution went into effect on January 17, 1920, ushering in an era of prohibition which banned the manufacture sale, and transportation of alcohol. This period had a profound impact on American society and led to the rise of illegal speakeasies and organized crime. Ratification of the 19th Amendment On August 18, 1920, the 19th Amendment was ratified, granting women the right to vote. It was a significant milestone in the women's suffrage movement. The Irish War of Independence The Irish War of Independence was a guerrilla-style conflict between Irish Republicans and the British forces that began in 1919 and continued until 1921, ultimately leading to the Anglo-Irish Treaty of 1921 and the establishment of the Irish Free State. The Sacco and Vanzetti Trial The trial of Italian immigrants Nicola Sacco and Bartholomew Vanzetti in the United States, accused of robbery and murder, became a symbol of social and political tension during the period, with many believing they were unfairly convicted due to their anarchist beliefs and immigrant status. They were convicted in July 1921 and executed in August 1927. These years were a vibrant period for artists, musicians, and novelists. Here are some significant cultural events. The Harlem Renaissance The cultural and artistic movement known as the Harlem Renaissance was in full swing, with flourishing of American literature, music, and visual arts, including the works of Langston Hughes, Zora Neale Hurston, and Duke Ellington. Publication of This Side of Paradise by F. Scott Fitzgerald Published in 1920, this debut novel brought Fitzgerald fame and is often seen as a defining work of the lost generation in American literature. The Evolution of Photography as Art In the 1920s, photography continued to evolve as a recognized and respected form of art, pioneering photographers like Alfred Stieglitz, Man Ray, and Edward Weston experimented with innovative techniques and compositions, pushing the boundaries of what photography could achieve as an artistic medium. This era witnessed a growing appreciation for the aesthetics and creative potential of photography, paving the way for its eventual recognition as a legitimate art form alongside painting and sculpture. The years 1920 and 1921 were marked by significant scientific and technological events. Here are a few notable examples. Increased use of radio broadcasting. Radio broadcasting for entertainment and information purposes began to take off in the early 1920s. The first commercially licensed radio stations, such as KDKA in Pittsburgh, began broadcasting regularly scheduled programming. The Discovery of Insulin, 1921 In 1921, Canadian scientist Frederick Banting and Charles Best made a groundbreaking discovery by isolating and extracting insulin from the pancreas. This revolutionized the treatment of diabetes and saved countless lives. And finally, some notable sci-fi-related births that occurred in these years. From 1920, Foundation author Isaac Asimov was born on January 2nd. Fahrenheit 451 author Ray Bradbury was born on August 22nd. And Dune author Frank Herbert was born on October 8th. From 1921, 
Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry was born on August 19th, and Solaris author Stanislaw Lem was born on September 12th. The years 1920 to 1921 in cinema marked a dynamic period of artistic expression, innovation, and societal reflection. These years witnessed a diverse range of films that explored the themes of love, comedy, drama, and social commentary. Way Down East, from 1920, D.W. Griffith's emotionally charged silent drama tells the story of a young woman's struggle for survival and redemption in the face of societal judgment and personal tragedy. The Mark of Zorro, from 1920. Douglas Fairbanks dazzles as the masked vigilante Zorro fighting for justice and romance in this swashbuckling adventure. The Kid, from 1921. Charlie Chaplin's heartwarming and humorous silent film follows his iconic tramp character as he cares for an abandoned child, creating an enduring bond that transcends adversity. The Sheik, from 1921. Rudolph Valentino plays a dashing desert prince in this romantic drama, that captivated audiences with its exotic setting and the allure of forbidden love. The Phantom Carriage, from 1921. A haunting and innovative Swedish silent film, it weaves a supernatural tale of redemption and the consequences of one's actions in a beautifully eerie narrative. The early 1920s were a time of significant developments and changes in the film industry, particularly in Hollywood. Some major film industry and Hollywood events that occurred during this period. The Hollywood studio system of the early 1920s was a dominant and highly centralized model of film production and distribution. Major studios, including Paramount, Warner Brothers, and MGM, wielded immense power, controlling every aspect of filmmaking from screenwriting to casting and distribution. Under this system, stars were contractually bound to specific studios and the studios tightly controlled their public images and careers. Silent film stars like Rudolph Valentino, Mary Pickford, and Buster Keaton achieved immense fame during this era, becoming iconic figures whose on-screen personas often defined the era's cinematic landscape. These stars were carefully groomed and marketed by the studios, creating a sense of glamour and allure that captivated audiences around the world. Early Experiments with Sound in Films While the transition to sound in films wouldn't become fully realized until 1927 with The Jazz Singer, the early part of the decade saw the beginnings of experimentation with synchronized sound technology. Innovations like the Vitaphone system allowed for the synchronization of sound recordings with moving images, offering a glimpse into the future of cinematic storytelling. These early experiments paved the way for the transformative impact of sound in cinema, heralding a new era in which movies would not only captivate the eyes, but also immerse audiences in the world of sound. I'll cover the history of sound in film and its influence on science fiction in a later Spotlight episode. The science fiction films of 1920 and 21, though not as well remembered today, influenced future filmmakers and ushered in a new era of cinematic imagination. These silent films, from dual personas of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, to the cautionary tales of Algol, Tragedy of Power, not only entertained but also challenged conventions of storytelling and societal norms while providing a way for audiences to deal with the aftermath of the First World War and the dawn of the Roaring Twenties. These films, set against the backdrop of a changing world, serve as a testament to the power of cinema and how it can transport us to other realms. There are many captivating chapters to explore in the history of science fiction film. Join me in upcoming episodes as I dive deeper into the subsequent decades, uncovering milestones, influential filmmakers, and iconic films that continue to shape the genre. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for future videos about the history of science fiction cinema. In the next episode, I'll cover the years 1922 to 1924.